Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Betty Broddle, a talented actress and the elder sister of the esteemed Joan Leslie, known for her roles in High Sierra and Sergeant York, has passed away at the age of 104 in Florida. The family confirmed her passing through Kathy Palmer, a family member, to The Hollywood Reporter. Rodell's exceptional career featured performances alongside her sister in crucial wartime charity pictures such as Thank Your Lucky Stars and Hollywood Canteen, as well as other significant films like Yankee Doodle Dandy, Too Young to Know, and Cinderella Jones. Elizabeth Ann Brodell was born on February 5, 1920, in Detroit, the daughter of John, a bank teller, and Agnes, a pianist and homemaker. She was a member of the Brodell Sisters, a vaudeville act that toured North America from their hometown in New York City to Canada and Florida. Her sisters were Mary and Joan. Betty's early exposure to the entertainment industry led to her and her sisters' roles in the 1936 short film Signing Off, which launched her career in film. Her contributions to the film industry went beyond the parts she played alongside her sister. She has also appeared in films such as Ladies Courageous, Cover Girl, and Swing Hostess. In 1948, she married Joe Franzalia, with whom she lived until his death in 1999. Betty has lived at Fort Walton Beach, Florida since 1963, where she has led a long and fulfilling life. Tony and Chuck are her children. Polly, Sonny, and Danielle are grandchildren, and Taylor, Joe, Layla, and Lily are great-grandchildren. She was preceded by her infant son, Joseph, who died in 1951, her legacy is characterized not just by her contributions to the film business, but also by the extraordinary life she lived and the impact she had on her family and those around her. Her sister, Joan Leslie, was also a well-known figure in Hollywood, leaving a legacy of cinematic quality. Joan's remarkable performances in High Sierra and Sergeant York, among others, combine with Betty's own triumphs to showcase a family that is inextricably linked to the fabric of American cinema. Mark Spiro, a luminary in the realm of music, passed away at the age of 67 due to lung cancer. Born on March 28, 1957 in Seattle, he was a monument to music's transformational power, leaving a legacy as a songwriter, record producer, and recording artist that reached across continents. His musical odyssey carried him from Seattle to Los Angeles, then across the ocean to Germany, where he collaborated with musicians such as Laura Branigan, Anne Murray, and David Hasselhoff, launching an outstanding career. His talent helped shape the soundtracks of many lives, with notable contributions to the Top Gun soundtrack among his early accomplishments. His career began with Interscope Records, but he soon moved on to pursue solo projects and partnerships that crossed genres and borders. His CDs, like Care of My Soul and It's a Beautiful Life, demonstrated a depth of musicality and emotion that enthralled audiences throughout the world. His influence went beyond his solo work, contributing to the success of artists such as Julian Lennon, with whom he co-wrote and produced Someday, a duet with Steven Tyler. His ability to connect genres has led him to produce for Ruby Summer, a combo comprised of his daughters Ruby and Summer Spiro. His final composition, Traveling Cowboys, released in 2021, demonstrated his enduring talent and passion for music. His collaborations over the years, including work with Steve Perry, Rick Springfield, and Cheap Trick, among others, demonstrated his versatility and significant influence in the music business. Spiro's songwriting talent was also visible in legendary pieces such as Julian Lennon's Saltwater, as well as contributions to soundtracks and albums by a variety of artists and genres. His passing is a great loss for the music industry, but his legacy will live on via his contributions to music and the many lives he touched with his work. Survived by his family, his memories and music will continue to inspire and resonate, reminding us of the power of creativity and passion to leave a permanent mark on the world.
Jennifer Leake, a beloved actress noted for her performance in the 1968 family comedy Yours, Mine, and Ours, as well as important work in soap operas such as The Guiding Light, The Young and the Restless, and Another World, passed away at the age of 76. She was born in Cardiff, Wales in 1947 and began her acting career with early roles that indicated a bright future. Her relationship to the entertainment industry grew stronger when she met Tim Matheson on the set of Yours, Mine, and Ours, where they portrayed step-siblings. This on-screen connection carried over into their real life when they married, albeit for only a few years. Matheson, thinking on her death, offered his sincere sorrow and remembered her as a remarkable woman who was not only strong and beautiful, but also extremely talented. Yours, Mine, and Ours starred Leek as Colleen North, offering a remarkable cinematic experience about a blended family negotiating life's complications together. Her skill flourished on television soap operas, where she played characters such as Gwen Sherman, Olive Springer, Gordon Randolph, and Blanche Bouvier, making substantial contributions to the plots of these cherished shows. Despite leaving acting in the 80s to pursue a career in real estate, her influence on film and television, particularly through her work in soap operas, remained strong. Her passion to her craft and talent to bring people to life have made an everlasting impression on both audiences and industry professionals. Her husband of 47 years, James Doria, and a brother, as well as a large number of friends and fans who admired her work, continue to carry on her legacy. Her path from the screen to combating a serious illness illustrates her courage and resilience, which have defined not only her roles, but also her personal life. Her contributions to the entertainment industry, as well as her brave fight against progressive supranuclear palsy, will be remembered and cherished for many years to come. Julie Lynn Charlotte, the innovative mind behind the poodle skirt, a symbol of 1950s American fashion, passed away at the age of 101. Her legacy is one of innovation and ingenuity, illustrating that necessity can truly be the mother of creation. Born in New York on October 26, 1922, her contribution to fashion was rather unintentional. She made the first circle skirt out of felt in 1947, when she needed a new skirt for a holiday party, but didn't have the sewing skills or money to buy one. This simple yet innovative design, complete with holiday-themed appliques, foreshadowed the iconic poodle skirt that defined a generation. Her initial invention was so well received that she was urged to make and sell more skirts. Her designs immediately gained popularity, with the poodle skirt in particular becoming a teen hit throughout the United States and beyond. By the 1950s, similar skirts were selling for almost $400 today, demonstrating their popularity and demand for her original design. Aside from her fashion accomplishments, she led an active life filled with artistic activities. Growing up in Los Angeles, she was a skilled vocalist who sang with superstars such as Judy Garland and Lana Turner in her teens. She sang with Xavier Kugat's orchestra and the Los Angeles Civic Light Opera Company, and she even sang with the Marx Brothers during WW2. Her theater presence extended to Broadway, where she performed in the 1945 revival of The Red Mill. Her personal life was as varied as her business, with four marriages that included two millionaires, a royal count, and a baron's son. Her lasting legacy, however, is the excitement and flair that her poodle skirts provided to the youth of the 1950s, embodying the spirit and innocence of the time, Charlotte retired to Tepoztlan, Mexico, and left behind a fashion legacy that continues to inspire and excite today. Louis Gossett Jr., an iconic figure in film and television, passed away at the age of 87. The Brooklyn native's brilliant career was highlighted by his stunning performances in An Officer and a Gentleman and the pioneering miniseries Roots, for which he won an Oscar and an Emmy, respectively. His talent and versatility shone through in a range of roles, from his early days on Broadway in A Raisin in the Sun, to his impactful depiction of gunnery sergeant Emile Foley, whose complicated interactions with Richard Gere's Zack Mayo established a cornerstone of military drama in film. His portrayal of black and brown authority characters in film, particularly in An Officer and a Gentleman, provided a fresh narrative perspective, 
demonstrating his ability to break down racial barriers and prejudices in Hollywood. Aside from his award-winning parts, he was well known for his captivating performances in action films such as The Punisher and Iron Eagle, in which he infused his characters with intensity and depth. His work on the blockbuster Planet of the Apes and the popular children's show Land of the Lost established his versatility and appeal across genres and audiences. His commitment to his profession was evident in his meticulous preparation for roles, particularly his training at the Marine Corps Recruitment Division for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. His influence on film, television, and the larger cultural environment is enormous. His portrayal of multidimensional individuals, as well as his commitment to social causes, have left a lasting impression that continues to inspire and resonate today. His family's need for privacy at this time reflects the tragic loss of a beloved father, grandpa, and brother, a true gentleman and superb actor whose warmth and zest for life affected everyone he knew. Robin Bernard, remembered for her captivating role as Terry Brock on the ABC soap opera General Hospital in the 1980s, has passed away at the age of 64. The actress, who was a beloved figure in the world of daytime television, was found in a field behind a business in San Jacinto, California. She was born on May 26, 1959, in Gladewater, Texas, and made her acting debut in 1981 with the film Diva. However, it was her depiction of Terry Brock on General Hospital from 1984 until 1990 that helped her become a household name. As the daughter of the wicked character D.L. Brock, played by David Groh, her character faced a slew of obstacles, including a drinking problem that jeopardized her potential music career on the show. Her brilliance went beyond her outstanding performance on General Hospital. She made memorable cameos on various television shows, including Simon & Simon, Whiz Kids, The Facts of Life, Tour of Duty, and Meg Gray. Her film credits also demonstrated her versatility as an actress, including performances in Betty Blue, Rosalind and the Lions, and Kings for a Day. Her final appearance was in the film Voices from the High School, where she played a psychotherapist, showcasing her extensive acting ability. Robin's sudden passing has left a vacuum in the hearts of those who knew her, collaborated with her, and admired her work from a distance. She is survived by her sister, Crystal Bernard, best known for her part on the sitcom Wings, as well as other family and friends that adored her. Her contributions to the entertainment business, particularly her outstanding performance on General Hospital, have left a lasting legacy that will be remembered and honored. As the entertainment industry and her fans reflect on her career, Bernard is remembered not only for her brilliance, but also for the warmth and depth she brought to each character she played. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Rock legend, John Bon Jovi faces uncertain future on touring. In a candid revelation, John Bon Jovi has shared that his return to the concert stage remains uncertain as he continues to recover from major vocal cord surgery nearly two years ago. The Bon Jovi frontman expressed his desire to tour next year, but emphasized his ongoing recovery process. His battle with vocal cord atrophy, a challenge that threatened his musical craft, was highlighted during the Hulu docuseries, Thank You Good Night, The Bon Jovi Story. Despite the hurdles, Bon Jovi's resilience shines as he celebrates his 40th year in the music industry, looking forward to the release of Bon Jovi's 18th studio album, Forever, on June 7th. This update not only underscores the dedication Bon Jovi has to his art, but also highlights the physical challenges performers can face. News 2. Christina Applegate courageously shares her MS battle. Christina Applegate has openly discussed her challenging journey with multiple sclerosis, revealing the depth of her struggle on the Armchair Expert podcast. Diagnosed in 2021, the renowned actress faces daily challenges, including 30 lesions on her brain, affecting her mobility and causing severe pain. Despite previous health battles, including breast cancer, Applegate describes MS as the worst thing that has ever happened to me, highlighting the relentless nature of the disease. Her candid sharing sheds light on the reality of living with MS, emphasizing the importance of awareness and support for those affected. Applegate's resilience and openness in sharing her story 
serve as a beacon of hope and strength to others facing similar battles. 